In this video, we're going to talk about how Civil 3D is using the data that we have input into our drawing. We have now given two definitions to a surface, and we want to look at uh, how Civil 3D reads that to build the surface and display it the way that we are currently seeing it. And if we see it in a way that we don't want it to be displayed, uh, how we can go about correcting that. And this gets important when you have a complex surface build with multiple definitions and many edits. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, how you can control those edits, how you can control those definitions, and how you can get your surface to look the way you want it to look. Uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to jump into our EG surface. We're going to right click on the EG surface in the prospect tab of the tool space window. We're going to select surface properties. And then inside of surface properties, we're going to go to the definitions tab. And inside the definitions tab, this is kind of what Civil 3D looks at when it's determining how to build your surface. So we have a couple of definition options and then we have an operations window. So we're going to go through the three definition options and then we'll go into the data operations window. So inside of the build dropdown, uh, what we have is we have information on how to uh, copy delete dependent objects, yes or no. We have an exclude elevations less than a certain elevation. So if you, for some reason, you know your survey shots are, should all be above 200 feet, then you would want to exclude any elevations that are less than 200, so it would remove data that's in error. You could also exclude elevations greater than a certain amount. You could say, I know that I'm only working in the range of 150 to 200 feet. So anything above 200 feet, don't, don't include that elevation data. And then we have a maximum angle. That's talking about the angle between lines on a triangle. You can set a maximum angle that's allowable in that, in that triangle data. And if it goes above a certain angle, it will exclude that data. Same thing with maximum triangle length. You can set a maximum length to your triangles and say, if the length of these triangles gets longer than a specific number, then I don't want you to include that because that's stretching the information that I've provided too far. And then when we add our break lines, if break lines cross, they, there could be a possibility they're not on the same site and so they're not interacting. And so if you want to avoid the possibility of break lines crossing and providing conflicting information, you can leave your information for allow crossing break lines as no. If you know that all of your break lines are on the same site, then what you can go ahead and do is you can check that as yes, and you won't return errors if you see uh, break lines crossing each other. So then we're going to go ahead and look at data operations. Data operations just return a yes or a no on whether or not you're going to allow for this surface to display boundaries, break lines, contour data, DEM files, point files, point groups, drawing objects, and our point survey query or our figure survey query. So that's just a simple yes or no on whether or not you're going to allow certain data in the surface. Then we have our edit operations and whether or not you're going to allow certain types of edits to be displayed in the surface. You can see in our surface we have, we do not allow simplify to be used. So that's important to note that if for some reason you're trying to do a simplify, it's not doing anything to your surface, you may want to come in here and check edit operations and then change use simplify to yes if you want simplify in your surface. Now what we get into down here is an important feature because what Civil 3D does is it looks at your data that you've placed in the drawing and it reads it from top to bottom. So what Civil 3D does is it says, okay, I'm going to place my point groups into the surface and then I'm going to place these boundaries. If something's not being displayed properly, then that's probably an operations error. And so what we're going to do is we're going to switch the operations of these so that you can see what happens if you don't have the correct order of operations when we're building a surface. If for some reason you added the boundaries and then added the point groups, this is what would happen. I'm going to move that boundary up. It's going to give me an error. It says I need to rebuild it. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and rebuild the surface. And what you see happen is the boundaries that we had for the house here, the contours are now being displayed through those boundaries and that's not what we want. So that would be a case where if you were looking at the surface and you said, hey, I thought I put these house boundaries in, why is the contours displaying through those boundaries that I had defined? And then that would be a order of operations error that you have inside of this operation window. So you would see 
look, my boundaries are being displayed and then I'm adding these point groups in, these point groups are overriding those boundaries. And so I need to make sure that those boundaries are applied after all the data is put in. So I'm gonna go ahead and move those boundaries back down. I'm gonna hit apply. I'm gonna rebuild the surface. And now my holes are being displayed again inside of the surface.